wrong, it is immoral, it is unnecessary. The next Prime Minister, Jeremy Corbyn! It's like Birdman in rep. The unlikely comeback of an ageing leading man. A lot of it's set in dingy theatre corridors and dressing rooms. This is Newcastle. And Jeremy Corbyn's going over his lines. Or he would be if he could read them. You see, I cannot read my own writing. So I cannot read a speech to save my life. So I make a speech on the basis of notes I've written, which are then absorbed into my mind. Well, the sad thing is you've got to wear headsets like Madonna. I'm really sorry it's all we could do. I'm I can tell you there's so many new faces, new people kind of energised and engaged and want to be involved, it's brilliant. It's not, when we put out a call for volunteers, we had to turn people away. There are too many stewards, it's fantastic, great. There's people saying all kinds of bad things about lots of us. Well, I tell you what, I don't care. <laughs> it's been a long day on the campaign trail, but waiting at home for Mr Corbyn is his ballot paper for the Labour leadership, and it's a good feeling. It's, it's there, on the shelf, waiting, looking at me. I'll hey, fill it, and I'll fill it all in. <laughs> These honest kebab vendors left their skewers and their miscellaneous meats where they were to go out and greet the leadership hopeful. I've got lots of uh, big Algerian community in my constituency yes. in Finsbury Park, okay. yes. all along Blackstock Road. Thank you very okay. much. It's Friday, so this must be Plymouth, and Newsnight is ushered into the green room backstage. You can't possibly have imagined that in your mid-60s, although looking very hale, oh, thank you this, this yes. would happen. You'd be virtually cheered through the streets. Um, it's an interesting experience, but uh, I'm quite used to doing a lot of campaigning and travelling around, but this is obviously of a completely different order. But do you have the stuff to run the country? Can you be ruthless when they come to bring you that awesome responsibility of the nuclear briefcase, you will say? Take it away, lads, I don't want it. Well, my position is we have a commitment under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty to take steps towards disarmament. We haven't fulfilled those obligations. I think we should. I've attended... So you would say, yeah, I, I'm I, not going to have the briefcase? If, well, because I want us not to renew Trident. We're now taking part in a high-speed chase, but within the statutory limits, to try and get to Plymouth Station ahead of Jeremy Corbyn. This way, please. Talking, you might have thought Jeremy Corbyn would be ready for a brew. So Newsnight offered him a cup of tea from the perhaps soon to be renationalised train buffet. However, he declined and made it pretty clear that he needed some alone time. <laughs> Vladimir Putin's here. North London, Corbyn's final roadshow. Hello, Conrad. Evening. Where are you from? What do you think I'm from? Well, I don't know. I could hazard a guess. And do you think this is the sort of thing he would welcome? I think so, yes. The support of Putin? Now, this is, uh, I think, some kind of shopping channel coming live from this event. Oh, hello, John. Oh, oh Stephen Smith. Is that Gary? How are you? Yes. Yes. Which impact disproportionately on the poorest and most vulnerable. Oh, there's a fog of press in here. Still enjoying it, Jeremy. Oh, absolutely. This long travail, oh, this odyssey. It. Really. I'm sorry I couldn't buy you a cup of tea the other day. I would like to have done that. At the end of a long campaign, time for the very real pick-me-up of a vegetarian sandwich before the final event. 
All that remains is for Corbyn to take to the stage one last time. But where's the stage door? As we hunt for it in the gloaming, a chance for one last probing question. Absolutely sure you want this job. Isn't it a bit knackering? Let's be positive. Yes. Great campaign. We've had a great response and great support. And um, we've got some great ideas. Uh, only speakers this way, sadly. Only speakers. Jeremy Corbyn speaks well. He's obviously read a lot of books and pamphlets. But part of his appeal is he's not a normal politician. He's more like one of us. He's ordinary. But from tomorrow, his life may never be ordinary again. What will that mean for him and for the rest of us? Night, night. <laughs>